Hey folks, uh, my name is Joe Reeder, and I'm going to try to step you through a little bit about how the web app Sifter works. Sifter is a social media platform that can also double as a fantastic uh, field research tool. I'm looking at it for its application in the classroom and what it can do to bridge the gap between what my kids do in the classroom and what I try to encourage them to do outside of the classroom. Let's get started. Uh, first thing we're going to need to do is to uh, create an account. And um, there's my account, but what I want to do first is create an account for you. You would um, fill out this screen. You need an email address. Um, you'll need a username and a password to repeat the password, and it's really that simple. You now have a user account and um, we are now logged in. I have currently four sifters that you can see on the screen. These are just examples I'm playing with. Um, and in fact, the one right here, power to the people, is the sifter that I'm going to be using with my students. So let's use this one as a, a way to explore how this works. What you're looking at here are map pins, and these are the locations where the photographs to the right-hand side were taken. And in fact, if I mouse over the pictures, um, I can get a map pin to, to respond. Notice that you see five map pins on the screen. There are five photos on the right-hand side. If I were to zoom out of this map a little bit farther and reach into southern Wisconsin for some of my map pins, I now have nine map pins and, <clears throat> excuse me, nine um, images. If I wanted to explore one of those images a little more closely, I could uh, click on the image. Um, this is happens to be a, a solar panel array on a beverage company in Amherst, Wisconsin. I could post a comment there. I could... Um, forward this through email or some of those other social media apps. Let's, uh, let's add a new item to this list so we can see how that would work. If I were on my tablet or on a smartphone, the software will look almost identical, uh, depending, it resizes itself a little bit. Um, this add item button here is going to be just a blue X or blue plus sign if you're using it on a cell phone that's narrow. It just automatically senses that and provides that instead. I click on add an item. In this case, if I were on a cell phone, the select image would give me options of taking a picture. Well, here I'm on a desktop, so I'm going to go to select image and it's going to drive me over to my hard drive with all of its crazy things on there. I guess that's one way to to really learn about a person is to see what kind of things are sitting on their hard drive. So I'm going to put a picture of my son on there. And that's all I do on this side, this screen. If you look over on the lower right hand side, there's a place to put a description. Uh, so right now I'm going to come down to enter a caption and I'm going to type in something about it. I can, from here, go backwards and redo the image if I don't like it, or I can move forward with location. Right now, um, it's using my location where my computer is located, so that's where this black dot is. If I were on a smartphone or a, a tablet, this would automatically have located where I'm where the picture was taken. And this is about where where the picture was taken. The one thing that's a little bit hard to get used to is that on a desktop, in order to, to move that pin, as far as I can tell, all I'm going to do is move the map and the pin will just stay centered. So it's, it's a little bit something to get used to, but not too bad. The fine people who put this together at uh, Field Day Labs down at the University of Wisconsin-Madison 
have told me that in the near future, this screen will have an option of going to a satellite image also. Sometimes that makes it easier to identify where the, where the image was taken. My next step is to click on Categories. Now, if you look down below, this was this particular project. Um, I want my students to be able to map where different parts of the electrical grid are found. And they're going to tell me whether they're looking at transformers, transmission lines, substations, electric meters, or electric generators. Well, I'm going to call my son an electric generator. He's always full of energy. Um, I actually won't publish this one. So the next step is to click on Publish. And you can see what would show up on, online here. Um, my name, when I submitted the item, the note that I put on there, my son is, is in a prairie. But notice here it says Approve. And we'll get to that a little bit more in the, the second video. Uh, the way I have this set up is that if you have this mediated, you need to decide whether you're going to let this picture get posted. Anyone who can find your sifter could post a picture. And by having this approve button here, it helps you control what gets posted. I'm working with students. I trust them 95% of the time. It's that 5% of the time I want the ability to say approve. So if I were to click on approve, uh, that would be posted. Um, let me show you what it would look like. So I'm going to come over here to the button up here that looks like it's uh, oh, a landscape. And now there are four pictures here, including the picture of my son. But I'm the only one that gets to see that. So if I were to select this very blurry picture of a windmill, a wind generator, um, it doesn't say approve because I already have approved it. Um, with my son... I'm not going to say approve. I'm going to say delete. It's going to say, are you sure? And I say, yes, I don't want my son there. And it's gone. Again, this is Sifter. Um, the uh, field day labs at University of Wisconsin at Madison. Awesome people. Uh, an app with a whole lot of possibility. Take care.